Hello everyone. Namaste. Saudi Krab. Welcome to the uh, eminent personality webinars. This is managed by the Technobase. The idea about the eminent personality webinars is all about the professional journey of eminent persons. Who are eminent persons? We are talking about well-respected, well-experienced professionals. We are talking about 40, 50 years experience in the industry and what their journey is all about. In this program, we are, our focus is on the in conversation with eminent rubber industry professional. That's the theme. So our, our guest is basically from the rubber industry. In this series, we have we have planned a number of webinars, but today we are focusing only one person, but is Mr. V. Srinivasan. But in this, this program, we have invited a number of uh, well-experienced webinars. Some of them already finished. So we'll be adding more eminent people in the near future. Okay, and first of all, I'd like to um, convey my special thanks to Dr. Samar Bandhapadhyay, who is actually involved in this putting together, inviting guests, and also bringing the audience to them. So very much thankful to Dr. Samar. But also many other in rubber industry friends, well wishers, and supporters. They really support this idea of eminent rubber, you know, professionals. And another special thanks to the Rubber Technology Global Network. I think a lot of people know about this event through the our uh, Rubber Technology Network and also our magazine, Rubber and Tire Digest. And that kind of is my special thanks to also Society for Industrial Chemistry. Basically, this is in a society for chemists, scientists, and chemical engineers and based in India. So all of you are welcome to join this uh, in, you know, very useful and important society. If you are a scientist or if you are a chemist or if you are a chemical engineer, you should join this uh, society so that you are well connected. Uh, please check the details in their website, industrialchem.org. This is also a special thanks to the uh, society for supporting this event. And all these uh, eminent uh, special, uh, eminent personality webinars, you can watch them on our YouTube channel or Technobis channel. It's all are recorded, in, you know, immediately the next day we will post them in our YouTube channel. Please follow us on the this channel. Today, our guest is uh, Mr. Reese Srinivasan and uh, he is 73 plus years old with 50 plus years experience in the rubber and tire industries. And uh, our agenda will be like this. Um, basically, I give you welcome remarks. After that, a quick introduction to Technobase, what we are doing, and after that, you know, it's all about Mr. B. Srinivasan. He will be talking about his professional journey, the achievements, and also the lessons learned. And uh, and after that, we invite his colleagues, former colleagues, uh, talk about, you know, share their remarks about the their association with him. And then we have some brief uh, Q and A session, and Mr. Vishnu was and we will address some other questions raised by the, the audience. So this is a basic agenda of this program. So before we start, let me quickly introduce to you the Technobiz. Uh, please stand by. Let me open another file. Okay. So basically, what we are. Some of you may know already about who we are, uh, but for the sake of you know the new people, uh, give you a quick introduction. Uh, you may find the uh, about this presentation in the handout file. What I'm pre presenting today is very brief, but uh, the detailed information is in the you know in your uh, handout file. You can download it. Okay, so yeah, let me open it. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Okay. Welcome to Technobase. We have started Technobase in 2005. And it's basically recognized as International Resource Center for Industries and Technologies. You can find all the information about Technobis at technobis.org. Uh, and we invite you all to join the journey of Technobis. When it comes to our services, uh, we are trade exhibitions, um, we organize training conferences, webinars, business networks, publications, talent search, knowledge test, and, and we cover not just only rubber industry, but also the uh, other polymerless like plastics, polyurethane, adhesives, coatings, and also process technologies. The our pillars, of business pillars, are based on three things: this education, business, and networking. Education is the main connecting point for all other activities of us. So let me give you a quick introduction to what we are doing for the rubber, latex, and tire industries. First of all, we provide a global service. We are based in wherever you know. We do activities all over the world. Okay? We we'll just give you first impression of the exhibitions. We have a rubber expo, which is GRTE. It's based in Thailand. 
But we also have a show in Arab Rubber Expo in uh, near to Sharjah, and we have an Africa Rubber Expo. It is based actually in different regions in the in African region. So we have these exhibitions. Due to the COVID, we are not doing any physical shows right now, but it will be happening very soon, starting to next year onwards. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the webinars, the, because of the COVID, um, we get into the online activities, which is this uh, know-how webinars, which is a basic educational platform. Research webinar is basically for the research activity promotion. Technology webinar is focusing on the techno commercial presentation. And we have um, eminent personality webinars, which is what we are joining today. So please do check these websites you may find some of the topics relevant to useful to you let me quickly introduce to you know how webinars is an online platform for professional education and uh, we cover the same thing same profile we cover what we our business polymer process energy environment advanced technologies we have short webinars we have master classes virtual forums q and a with expert knowledge test and uh, all the topics what we offer is focus topics addressing real issues all our speakers are well experienced and knowledgeable. They're from across the world. And these web topics are available as scheduled as well as on demand. We have memberships. Okay, you can check the details on our website, or you can become individual, or you can be a corporate member, or education member, or premium. Okay. Uh, these are some of our experts who in the rub for based on their work in the rubber industry. You may know some of them. Okay, and they're from the different parts of the, the world, well experienced, knowledgeable, and international. Probably we are the only one who can offer this kind of service in a, in a very uh, integrated way and uh, covering broad subjects about the rubber industry, uh, uh, the rubber latex and tire. So when it comes to the online training, we have more than currently we have more than 150 plus focused training topics and all with 30 plus global experts. And all these are relevant to the, you know, the professional. When talking about professional means you can be, you know, very young in the industry or your experience useful for both of the people okay uh, if anybody interested to be part of this you know any expert in this audience wanted to present your topics for us you're welcome we welcome you to the you know, team of experts uh, you can check the details about 150 topics in, uh, in handout i send you or you can check our website we have master classes we have master class on rubber company for non-tire it is 10 day long we have master class on a tire company eight day long and we must present rubber host technology two day long uh, rubber mixing plant design and layout is two day long and rubber behavior one you know, day we're adding more topics compression molding that's on the two day long we have buffet package where you can take a lot of topics at one time weekend program if you want to educate yourself during weekend only one option is there we can offer you the customized state you know program for you as well you know if you're looking for your industry this kind of profile and, and you want to educate your team we can arrange for you okay and uh, comes to the research webinar it's all about promoting the research See, a lot of research is good research is happening in universities i want to bring this research to the industry so that they know what is happening and we have a research webinar some of these re researchers contributed the research webinars we also organizing the you know pakistan polymer research forum sri lanka polymer research forum Calcutta university polymer research forum you can see the schedules in our website and we also not only focus on the forum but we also highlighting the research itself research team and researchers so we are doing the first event in the Kinsuk Naskar Rubber Research Group. Um, they are very active in the rubber industry research from IIT Karakpur. So all the researchers, what they're doing, what kind of activities happening in, in their group, if they'll be presenting this webinar on the 15th December, you can you know, free to join and get to know them and also learn about the research activities. Technology webinars, it's all about promoting technologies. Okay, and also the suppliers can promote their technologies to the, to the target audience. Uh, we have this rubber and tire tech forum but this is focused on different region we have india rubber and tire tech forum middle east africa rubber tech southeast asia so please check the you know details in our website and technology-webinars.com and comes to the imminent, imminent webinar as i mentioned to you you know whatever we learn what what we are enjoying today because of the hard work of the our you know seniors or uh, all maybe you can call them as a grand boss of the industry where you know they put their efforts in 40 50 years in the industry that's why we are enjoying you know we know we have information at hand because of their hard work all day so we want to know about their journey that's why this imminent um, uh, imminent personality webinar so that the younger generation can understand the difficulties that the direct practices they made over the years okay so it's very good learning for all of us 
So uh, under this eminent personality, one focus in the rubber industry professional. So these are the people that invited. Some of them already completed, uh, and so we are we are every two every alternate Saturday we are organizing this uh, rubber industry you know, professional program. Okay. And more will be adding. Okay, this wrong list is there. Okay, and we have a technology knowledge test, uh, which is basically part of the master classes. We uh, it's like an online assessment test. We have publications. We have 50 plus reference books. If you're interested, you can check our website store.technology.org. We have a magazine, Rubber and Tire Digest, which is jointly produced by the Rubber World magazine. I probably might know. Currently, we have 6,000 um, readers across the world. Please, please subscribe. It's a free subscription, digital edition, rubbertiredigest.com. And we have a Rubber Technologies Global Network. It's basically Facebook. Um, currently, we have close to 4,000 people who are our members from, I think, around 20 countries. So if you if you have a Facebook account, if you are a regular you know, Facebook follower, member, and so you can also join our group to get up to date on the issue. And we are doing this SME rubber industry branding project who are interested in promoting, you know, branding is very important, just like the way I brand, you know, the techno base. Uh, so we support basically the small and medium size uh, you know, rubber industries. We offer the business and technical, technical consulting as well in terms of the experts, uh, support, branding, product launch, partner search, digital marketing extra as well. And we also have a talent search, which is basically you have a lot of inquiries in the past that, you know, industry is asking, Param, can you find the right person for it? So we help you through this talent search. Okay, so if you're looking for any job also, um, you can also write to me so I can keep in the, you know, my library of the experts. I mean, library of the, you know, the CVs. Uh, we have Technobit channel YouTube where a lot of information is available in public domain through Technobit channel. Okay, and that's me, okay, Param Prasadara, I think most of you know, and uh, you can always reach me by email or you know, mobile, okay. In the final, I say that Technob is an independent private organization aimed to serve the global rubber industry as best as possible with available resources and partnerships and friendships. The door is open to all interested professionals to be part of the Technob journey. We welcome you all to be part of Technob journey. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Again, please join the journey. And now that's about the uh, uh, Technobase, uh, what's all about Technobase. If you have any more questions about Technobase, you can always uh, uh, you know, contact me. Now it's not about any more techno base. It's all about Mr. V. Srinivasan. And uh, we want to know about Mr. V. Srinivasan, uh, about his journey. Uh, Srinivasan, sir, welcome you to the uh, Eminent Personality webinar program on In Conversation with Rubber Industry Professional. So we'd like to, you know, we'd like to start, sir. Please go ahead. Oh, yes. Thank you. Savadi Kap Peram. Namaste to Samar, Savadikap to Manoharan, who was with me in Thailand for about two or three years. And uh, thank you for organizing this uh, confession session. And that too, give me a non IPL day. I'm sure in good company. I'm also grateful to you both for enticing my colleagues. Rajagopalan, Taumani, Manoharan, Sunil Jagasiya, Nanu Ayer, Logi to volunteer to stay, to suffer my company for one more time in their life. Just last Saturday was Mahatma Gandhi's birthday. Taking a leaf or is it a page from his famous book, My Experiments with Truth, I'm going to attempt to share with you my experiments with rubber or is it rubber's experiment with me i can hear some people murmuring that's a bit of a stretch no i'm not going to talk about finite element analysis or eulerian equations for heat transfer in rubber no not on algorithms of oil seals in spacecraft so hang on there please do not switch off your laptops and smartphones i wish to share with you the enjoyable episodes of my career in the rubber industry. Sort of uh, uh, wonder in rubber land, not unlike Alice in Wonderland. It might sound a bit like uh, unflattering autobiography. I intend to name a few of the wonderful people who encouraged me, who boosted me, who mentored me, who defied me, and nurtured me during the half century in the rubber industry and still counting. 
some basic rules. No out of syllabus questions, okay? Like the impact of tellurium pentoxide during the presence of trace amounts of chlorosulfonated polyethylene. Two, questions should be strictly related to my confessions, points leading to myself making self-incriminating statements are a strict no, no. Okay, do I have your approval? Well, Rubber Devata has been very benevolent to me. I have had working relationship with small product like erasers to airships, to operationally critical payload capsules, opening bellows in Chandrayaan space vehicle. Time, and more so Param and summer, and summer permitting, I shall describe few of this awe-inspiring moments in my speech. What got me going into the rubber industry was reading a book called The Weeping Wood by Vicky Baum, a book written in 1943 by an Austrian actress and journalist. She talks not about what people did to rubber, but about what rubber did to people how rubber was stolen from Brazil, how Taylor, the management guru, experimented with time and motion study and established the fundamentals of modern management. Experiments at the summit and general rubber factories in the 1930s at Akron, the mecca of us rubber rights. I joined Dunlop on the 1st of September, 1969, as a production trainee after graduating from IIT Madras. My classmates, Loganathan, also joined on the same date and Varghese Abraham a couple of weeks later. The salary was uh, princely 600 rupees per month in Dunlop. Like most industries taking trainees do, I was given the important job of taking unimportant visitors around the sprawling Dunlop factory, which employed some 7,000 direct and 3,000 indirect workers, as seen in photo one. Param, may I have photo number one? Yeah, here you see me in this white uh, uh, shirt and trousers. Surprisingly, in those days, the uniform for management staff in Dunlop, India was white and white. It was a factory full of carbon black and they all used to get dirty very quickly. But the issue of, you know, the ability to wash the white clothes was an uh, incentive. So all of us wore cotton, white shirts and trousers. The people whom you see here are Nigerians uh, who had come to see the factory. It so happens that I myself went to, uh, to Nigeria and set up a part of the Dunlop factory there. But unfortunately, it got closed in the mid 30s. But currently, uh, my company, 60 Services, is rendering consultancy for a British group for settling, setting up a PCR and TBR factory in Nigeria at about 200 million US dollars. From Sahaganj, I got transferred to Dunlop Ambatu factory in Madras was as welcome as a COVID infected patient as the factory did not want any more trainees. Deva, our training manager, uh, took about three days to convince Chick Gonzalez, the production manager, to accept me and uh, give me a location. Chick Gonzalez said, let us stuff him in big shop. That was my appointment order in Dunlop Ambato. Let us stuff in. I was not wanted in any department. So the problem was that one extra management staff will uh, show a lower efficiency quotient. So I was got, I was kicked around from one place to another, was deployed in various departments where foremen went, foremen went on leave, was encouraged to write critical reports about against the engineering department and the technical departments, because I was an engineer, was deployed as continuous night shift manager, got to know the intricacies of various divisions from solution spreading 
to truck tire finishing. In the meanwhile, I was denied any executive position for want of something productive to do. I got married. At that time, the governments of West Bengal and Andhra Pradesh entered into an agreement with Dunlop UK for setting up a 5 lakh per annum tire and tube factory in Andhra Pradesh and West Bengal. Mr. P.K. Bedi, our chief engineer, took me as an engineering assistant. He eliminated the report writer from the production department and got himself a writer well-versed, pun intended, in all processes of a tire company. The production department was only too happy to get rid of me. It was a welcome break for me as I got a chair and a table. In the project departments was where I met Andrew Rajagopalan, my partner in 60 services and the foremost expert on solid tire manufacture today. Talwards like Raghunathan, who later became the vice president, V. Shekhar, who became the MD of Chiat Kelani, T. V. Ramachandran, who after being the technical head of Apollo, became the director and spokesperson for the Cellular Phone Manufacturers Association. It is something akin to Manoharan, who got away from us and is now the senior vice president of the mighty Reliance Geo. The products for uh, West Bengal the projects for West Bengal and Andhra Pradesh were actually contracted by Dunlop UK. But by 1973, Dunlop UK had switched over to radials. Ambatur was a star factory in the group and therefore was directed to do all the project preparation. While I was immensely enjoying my work, I met with my, in an accident, which later I found was a fortunate incident. While riding on my Java mobile to meet my senior colleague, Elumalai, the chief electrical engineer who was laid up in an orthopedic hospital for some clarification, I got knocked down by the truck in front of the Anand Theater on the 15th of September, 1975. I didn't get to the hospital, though a bit late, but in a horizontal position, being carried on a stretcher due to a fractured knee. Mr. Sen Sharma, IAS, chief of the West Bengal Industrial Development Corporation, requested for an urgent meeting to assess the status of the project. Two officials came from Dunlop, UK. Meetings were arranged at the Taj Coromandel Hotel in Chennai. Only problem was that I was laid up in the hospital. My immediate boss, Mr. Sundara Rajan, was firm that I should be available at the venue. So I attended the meeting, reaching the Taj in an ambulance for three days. So I was hidden, I was hidden in a guest room next to the venue room initially. The wily San Sharma soon found out that I was the almost author of the project book and ensured that I actually sat through the meetings, but on a wheelchair. He also hinted that I should be in Kolkata uh, office due to proximity to the project and his own office. I got transferred to the works uh, division headquarters of the mighty Tunnel of India those days. Suddenly, I was not only seeing the movers and the shakers of Dunlop, such as Raj Mohan Bandari, Mohini Sagarwal, Alistair McIntyre, Kali Sarkar, RN Basu, Krithvi Ayer, but also sitting in meetings with them and having lunch and dinner. Raj Mohan Bandari was a brilliant uh, person. When uh, uh, during the farewell party at his, uh, he was asked, like normally we do, uh, what's the secret of your success, sir? Uh, he tapped his uh, pipe and uh, the guy next to him, I think that was Madhav Lal Kapoor, the purchase director said, that's because Raj always uh, you know, responded to anybody who knocked on his doors. Raj says, not only on my doors, but also on my neighbor's doors. That's how he became from a lowly accountant uh, to the first uh, uh, deputy managing director of Dunlop India. 1977, change in government in West Bengal and Andhra Pradesh. Jyoti Basu, 
succeeds Siddhartha, Siddhartha Shankar Ray. The project lost its steam. By then, in by then, Sahagan, which was a 40-year-old factory, had become more like an archaeological, uh, you know, museum for rubber machinery. Most of the equipment were archaic and old. Even the four-bowl calendar, which was lent second-hand in 1935 from the Birmingham factory, was really, you know, getting to be really archaic. New competition from Modi, JK, Apollo, not only stole veteran Dunlopians, but also brought out innovative tires and competed fiercely. Rajamani of Dunlop in Modi uh, was uh, made a tire and uh, an elephant was made to carry, and the truck was made to carry an elephant to show the strength. Business World, uh, a, a statesman group publication, brought out an unflattering issue with the cover lamenting the bumpy ride at Nanla. During a drink with Sen Sharma, who was jobless at the time, and uh, the idea of government supporting modernization of Sagan st uh, struck me. Sharma encouraged me and asked me to send a note uh, entitled Substantial Expansion Sahaganj. All new machinery would be put in a purpose-built factory in the same premises. I drafted a thick volume entitled Sahaganj Rehabilitation. It was a great feel-good book as it talked about how Sahaganj will have state-of-art facilities, amenities, including a helicopter to ferry people. The West Bengal government was to give all the concessions that are due to a new factory. The board was happy at this and as Dunlop UK was increasingly reluctant to allow any capex in India. This was sure an augury of the sad things to come to Dunlop. Suffice to say that the modernization did take place with the new bagomatic press, white box extruder, steel cord conveyor belting, spiral hoses. Business world brought out another issue proclaiming an amazing turnaround at Dunlop. It was at this time that I got a lucky break. Met Mr. Ratnam, the then chairman of the TBS group, while at discussions regarding the applicability of pre q treads to new tires with tread defects, as TBS had set up a brand new factory uh, in collaboration with Vulcan of Canada. Mr. Ratnam was requested by Mr. Venkatraman, the then Defense Minister of India, to consider taking over of a closed rubber product manufacturing uh, company in Pune. Swastik rubber, as it had been making operationally critical products for defense, was a critical source, but had been closed for nearly three years. Ratnam requested me to check out Swastik, which had been closed for some three years, and advise him if it can be made operational. I did, and soon landed with a job of rehabilitating swastik on the 25th of June, 1983. Does that ring a bell? You might remember that it was the day when Kapil Dev won the World Cup on one day international cricket for India. Now to swastik, where the sky was the limit and I had the most enjoyable uh, time. But before that, what was the takeaway from Dunlop teamwork like coxing the force at the Merchants and Bankers Regatta, photo number two. Soon after that, Dunlop was taken over by Manu Chabria, a trader who owned Jumbo Electronics uh, in Dunlop, but uh, successfully ran Dunlop to Earth. Dunlop lost brilliant stalwarts like V. Shaker to Chiat, Varghese Abraham to GK, Pradeep to Mahapatra to the Goenkas. 1983, joining TVS was only a step to getting swastik going as it involved protracted negotiations with the banks and the government prior to opening. What I found amusing while at TVS was that a significant number of staff up to the rank of even general manager would prostrate at the feet of the TVS family elders when they 
whenever they saw them. 1984, Swasti. Every possible product from erasers, uh, photo number three, Photo number three, please, Param. Photo number three. Erasers to photo number four, aerostats. I seek uh, Param's and Summer's indulgence in showing you a few of the strange products developed by the talented team at Swasti. Sando brand erasers. People amongst you might, of my vintage, might remember using Sando brand erasers or rubber to correct mistakes made while writing with pencil. As V.S. Vaidya, the chairman of Swastik and the founder of Swastik used to comment, Sando helped the younger India erase its mistakes. V.S. Vaidya was an ardent patriot and developed an array of indigenous products to replace imported rubber products, especially for the Indian defense sector. Premier among them was the pannier tank bag, which was used as a liner in the fuel storage tanks of the Vijayanta, India's main battle tank at the time. While we had humorous issues on uh, some parents quarreling with swastik because the children ate the fruit-scented erasers, the vexing issue was that we had to file a case against our own chairman as he had, during the closure, set up a small factory for an indigent relative who made the Sando brand erasers and was merrily supplying it to the market. Photo number four, please. Aerostat. While touring the various defense establishments, begging them to commence placing orders on swastik, I met a young scientist at DRDO with a peculiar hairstyle. He took me aside and introduced me to a person nicknamed Balloon Subramaniam of the Space Application Center, Ahmedabad. Swastik had, in the past, developed many inflatable devices, such as ricky boat, life rafts, leg jackets, etc. Was familiar with the process. Aerostat was a product which DRDO wanted to develop, and it was a large aircraft-shaped balloon which would be tethered to the ground. As it was a defense-related item, Western countries which had technology would not sell the product to India as we were non-aligned. The aerostat flying at a height of one kilometer and bearing a camera platform would be able to monitor the goings on and forewarn the approach of low flying enemy aircrafts. Kalam Sahib assured Subramani that as I hailed from the same Tirnaveli neighborhood as he was and was also a previous person, I would be able to organize the development. So the result was uh, picture number five, please. The result was, as you see, the labor of love of Mr. Dige, Limaye, Manoharan, and Rajagopalan, and of course, Dr. Professor P. N. Nair, whom I knew only as Nanu Ayer at that time. The last three, I understand, uh, are in the meeting. Enthused by the positive response from SAC, I met Professor Narasimha of uh, Aeronautical Research Establishment at Bangalore and Dr. Raja Ramanna with a view to developing airships and even made presentation at the Vayu Bhavan and also to General Vaidya, who was the Chief of Army Staff. Picture number six, please. Flexi tank. Now, the talent for making inflatable devices led us to developing flexible bags for storage of liquids. Picture number seven. Mr. Talwar and Lime came up with a working model of a pillowcase shaped tank. This enabled a normal truck to double as a water tanker when needed. So you have this picture of uh, a water filled flexi tank. Item number seven, item number eight, a flexi tank on a bullock cart so that it could be used in the villages. Then there is picture number nine, a 50,000 liter flexi tank for storage of water or oil or what you may. Then item number 10 is a self-supporting tank uh, used 
uh, by the uh, uh, what is that border security force uh, bsf uh, and rajasthan border areas then came the friendly invitation from sri lanka mr rajiv gandhi our prime minister sent the indian peacekeeping force which had the same fond reception in sri lanka as what happened to me when i joined ambattur the rnd wing of the army was wanting to secure supply of atf aircraft turbine fuel while in sri lanka jagdish jadav spearheaded the testing and we offered the tanks for transportation and storage uh, picture number 11 and then 12 i even went to sri lanka i think wagunia base blindfolded uh, without a passport uh, when a few of the tanks got damaged and had to be repaired i found that jagdish yadav was actually using a band aid to close the small pin holes in the small tanks the indian peacekeeping force went into sri lanka Uh, was soon which went into sri lanka was soon becoming a war waging force due to adverse circumstances so as thing was getting closer and closer towards supplying various special rubber products one fine day i was invited to army headquarters and shown what looked like an extra large life jacket i was told by general joseph who was the topmost authority for inspection that they were clandestinely obtained as the suppliers were forbidden by the governments to sell it to india without their permission as usual they were urgently required they were for troops who had to carry heavy grenade launchers and jump from the launching boat into the sea the life jacket will have to be uh, the life jacket automatically inflated once the water splashes and wets the little gas cylinder embedded in the belt when we develop the when we quickly develop the copy of that uh, amphibian troop that jacket we had an issue we needed four quick doffing buckles similar to those in airplane seats so that they could be removed quickly and easily once the soldier is out of water and runs for cover we couldn't get the local market and our bombay office manager was charged with procuring the buckle rang me one day uh, of the on the day of the test and sought permission for to fly from bombay to pune in some motoring which was his normal procedure only when he landed in pune and came to the factory and she officially gave a set of buckles it did dawn on me that in order to meet the emergency he had specially taken the flight and quietly cut off four of these buckles from the avro airplane seats needless to say uh we returned those buckles and apologies profusely uh you can see the high buoyancy figure number 13 is the high buoyancy amphibious troop life jacket and figure number 14 when it is deployed we had some hilarious incidents which time permitting i will uh, uh, discuss during the question and answer session now coming back to swastik again you know of the meetings with dr raja ramanna when i was trying to pedal the aerostat for perimeter security of the nuclear power plants and the 50 kl flexi tank to contain the heavy water during emergency leaks he gave me a photo of buses carrying bags of natural gas on the rooftops for fueling purposes and told me swastik should try something on similar lines so item number 15 natural gas bags in china on on buses so the swastik team took up the challenge and we <laughs> built a gober portable gober gas plant whereas the conventional gober gas plant is actually a well in the ground with a sheet of galvanized iron dome as the for the gas it uh, it was a difficult process because the remote villagers has to first of all dig a well and those days cement was not easily available to poor farmers 
then transporting the sheet dome from the city uh, to the village on a bullock cart was also a major problem. And these uh, tin uh, or iron domes uh, started uh, developing uh, small pinholes and leaks due to the acidic nature of the bovine urine. On the other hand, our plant didn't require any digging. It was above the ground and since it was exposed to uh, sunlight, uh, the, the heating process accelerated both the speed of generation of gas and the quantity of gas. District collectors who had to meet their targets for on gober gas plants, uh, but were finding it very difficult to convince the farmers to dig a well and get the dome, found this uh, an answer from God. Gober plants they persuaded them to buy these plants because they can be very easily installed and they were great sellers, especially, especially during the month, during year end period like uh, February and March, because all they had to do was buy that stuff and report that so many gas plants have been installed. On top of that, the farmers got a subsidy of rupees 3000 per plant. But I, I learned later that we had issues. The farmers started passing the portables from one to another and claiming the subsidy. So it was only one tank which was passed from one person to another person, one village to another person, and everybody used to claim that they have bought it and claim the subsidy. So portable gober gas plant generator, item number 16. Item number 17, the problem was, item number 17 please, that gober gas could be used only in the approximate vicinity by the uh, by the people who are living very close to it we wanted a thing which was similar to the chinese one so we made these bags and uh, they were of a capacity of roughly around one and a half meters cube uh, one and a half cubic meters and enough for uh, villagers uh, you know uh, heat resources for cooking food so we had these gas bags uh, selling gas at about one rupee or one rupee fifty paise those days the surplus gas was also used. Now, thanks to uh, Kalan Saab, we were given the job of lining some uh, bombs. Item number 18. It's not usually in a factory that you will see a bomb being, you know, uh, handled in a rubber factory, but this is what we are doing. It's only later that I realized that they were the precursors of uh, the uh, missiles which uh, Kalam was developing. Then finally, item number 20. Item number 20, please. Oh, item number 19, I'm sorry. That's uh, yours truly there uh, in a tank. Not in a water tank, but in a real battle tank. That's just for fun. Item number 20, please. Uh, boots for camels. Uh, when we toured, when I was trying to pedal uh, uh, flexible tanks, etc., to the border security force in Rajasthan, uh, the commander there came up with this issue uh, for a drink, where he said that these camels were developing, you know, abscess in their hooves because they had to walk on the run of Kutch, where uh, salt particles uh, got crystallized and got embedded into the camel's uh, thing. Uh, he was uh, willing to organize uh, some uh, development funds for uh, for the camels. So our people developed a boot for the camel. I will not go into that because it's too hilarious and too long. But if I if I get some time, I'll talk about it later as to what happened when we tried to fit these boots onto the camels. Now, on to some eminent persons I met uh, uh, in the while at uh, Swastik. One is Mr. Toyoda Gosai and uh, Bharat Ram. Uh, the reason why a uh, fellow from uh, Swastik Rubber Products was honored by Toyoda Gosai is because, uh, incidentally, Toyoda Gosai is the largest uh, rubber component manufacturing firm in the world. Uh, the thing is, they were the suppliers of this uh, mud pads uh, to the DCM Toyota. And, uh, they had a very strict specification and no one could make it and they thought it was just a thing which they could buy off the shelf. 
It was only during on the launch day did they realize that the Japanese technical people were not allowing them to use it. Uh, more of it uh, from uh, uh, Nanu Ayer, Dr. Ayer, as to how he thought of a serpentine path to convince the DC employer of people uh, that they had that they had to pay a premium for getting those mud pads from us. And then I am here with uh, uh, Tan Sri Shekhar, the father of uh, rubber industry in Malaysia, uh, where I was honor honored for I don't know for what. Then also in 23, you are seeing me with uh, Sattad Aziz, the foreign minister of Pakistan, when we sold some products to Pakistan also. By this time, by this time, the owner of the company, Swastik, was no longer interested in running the company. I too was feeling the strain and actually collapsed while on a discussion with Lieutenant Colonel Chari. Incidentally, Lieutenant Ch Colonel Chari became Lieutenant General Chari and occupied the topmost uh, uh, position in the Army, uh, in the Defense Inspectorate. Uh, Inspectorate. I was hospitalized due to exhaustion. Puna Herald, the newspaper, ran a news item, Sick Company Swastik Revived, but Reviver Sick. My, uh, the company owner and I went to various tire companies and told them how acquiring Swastik will add industrial rubber products to, the, to their offerings and make them versatile like Dunla. Nobody bought the idea. It's just I went to Apollo, MRF, JK, uh, Chiat, you name it. But a few months later, after our roadshow, JK Tires called me one, to Delhi one day and asked me to sign a non-disclosure agreement. They then disclosed that whereas they did not buy the idea of Swastik, they liked the idea itself and bought Fenner India, the leader in industrial rubber products in India. Yes, they offered me a job too. So, Fenner India, 1988, 19, up to 1988, uh, from 1983. The welcome at Fenner was no better than what I received at Dunlop Ambatur. The revered Mr. R. Lakshmi Narayanan, who was then the technical director and the deputy managing director at FENA advised me against joining FENA. He said it was a sinking ship as the new company of Marwaris had taken over. It would incur losses. He quoted a pamphlet drafted by Alex Evans, the managing director, which hinted that things will from go, from go from bad to worse under the new management. But JK brought in brilliant professionals from various fields, and one of them was Mr. KT Reddy, now Dr. KT Reddy of JK Tires, as Executive Director of Marketing, and uh, Mr. Budhiraja of JK Paper as Executive Director of Finance. I joined them as the ED Technical. Fenner, which was a 30 crore turnover, 3 crore loss making company soon became a 300 crore turnover, 30 crores profit, thanks to uh, the bringing in of Mr. R.C. Gupta, who was from the textile field. At that time, I felt an urge to shift from manufacturing to marketing. But Fenner had a good, strong sales and marketing team under Mr. Reddy. So I quit and joined a Malaysian company to head uh, a company which was going to sell uh, rubber carbon bond mass, master batches and solid tires from India. The solid tires were sold in various brand names depending on the geographical location. It was at that time, it was at that time that uh, the famous Mahathir Muhammad of Prime Minister, the Prime Minister of Malaysia, who came with the famous slogan, Look East. Black Cat was at that time a popular American brand. Japan was held in high esteem. Japanese products were the best. Japan, Japanese management practices were the new Vedas of India. 
the translation to Japanese from black cat was kuro neko. Kuro means black, neko means cat. Kuro for black and neko for cat. Yeah. We called our brand Kuma Neko. Prospectives were made to believe that it is the, the same version of the black cat product. I realized after going to Malaysia, the factory hardly had uh, commenced any erection of plants. Much against my resolve of not getting into manufacturing, I had to go to the factory in Bunting and get the equipment installed and commissioned. Most of them were of second hand origin and spares were hard to come by. It was almost like one year or 18 months before we had the production going. The president of the company was constantly bickering with the promoters and it was not a conducive atmosphere. Cash flow was nil and there was no sale. After delay of more than a year, I made a, a sales trip to sell matcher, master batches in Europe which according to the original market research report had a very great potential. Armed with the freshly acquired American Express credit card, I visited all the major prospective master batch buyers. As I had an Eero rail pass, which let me travel unrestricted. I used to travel in the night uh, from one place to another, like from Barcelona uh, to Prague or places like that, bathe and freshen up and clean in the, in the clean restrooms of the railway station and visit prospectus. After 40 days, about 45 days later, I returned with a basket of orders. On going home, my wife looked a tad gloomy and handed me an envelope. The envelope contained a Dear John letter of sorts. It said something like betrayal of the president by the promoters, financial shenanigans, the president had suspended operations and fled Malaysia to escape escape civil and criminal actions against him. And here I was with orders and a heavily spent credit card. The company had not paid the rent for the house and other amenities for three months. The travel agent would not honor my credit card as he had not been paid for my European trip. In short order, chaos. I had to pledge my wife's jewelry to buy an air ticket for my daughter, wife, and me. Due to the benevolence of Joe Fernandez, the MD of Madura Courts, my daughter, my daughter got a uh, seat in the Vikasa School run by Madura Courts. I found uh, a place in G. Premji and company, which had the capability and spare capacity for making uh, the master batch. This factory was located in Surathani uh, in um, uh, in Thailand, uh, but the headquarters was in uh, uh, was in uh, was in Patpong. I'm quite sure uh, Param is looking surprised. Went to Suratani and um, and got the master batches delivered to the customers. In the meanwhile, my old uh, managing director R C Gupta, who was who had worked many years in uh, Thailand. Uh, came visiting to Thailand to meet some uh, friends and he asked me to head the export marketing department of Fenner India. I returned to India fairly rich as all the profits of the master batch selling was mine. Talk of a blessing in disguise. Back to Fenner. So far, I have narrated incidents during the first 25 years of my career. There are 25 more years of my career, but I think we are running out of time. I wish I could fast forward my speech. So I shall try to zip across now. Now, FENA, when I returned to FENA, I discovered that there was an archaic agreement which forbade FENA India from exporting without permission of FENA UK. And UK, was finding it increasingly difficult to sell their own V-Bells. Obviously, they were reluctant to support India's efforts at export of products. However, on my first trip to South Africa, I met John Bullock, the managing director of OptiBelt, who asked me if we could make belts for them in their brand name. Consultation with the legal department cleared us 
and we are soon making belts for just about every major Western company. Thanks to Tavamani, Palenadan, Vidhi Vilangan, Mohan Ram, and RPDR Bose, various world famous brands of products were being made and exported from Fener India. For lack of time, I will not uh, uh, dwell on other aspects of my, my career in Fener. Even the time when Fener USA sued Fener India, naming the chairman, MD, and yours truly as respondents. Maybe at the Q&A session, if there is time for one, I shall talk about it. This also ensures that I do not have to face a E is equal to MC square type of questions in the Q&A session. In February 2003, I got a call from JK Chairman's office that I was posted as a resident manager in China. Procurement of tires, raw materials, equipment was my area of action. I got to visit just about every tire factory in China, saw peculiar methods of rubber product manufacture. Time and perm permitting, I would like to share with you my skill at talking in Chinese. It so happened that uh, I attended a very strong course on uh, speaking Chinese. And my wife had told me that uh, I should always try to speak Chinese. That's the only way I'll be able to learn it. And so when I was on a trip to Shanghai, I was in a hotel and uh, I wanted, I was having this kind of sore throat. I wanted some hot water. So I looked into the dictionary and found that O Yao Re Shui. O means me, I, Yao want, Re means hot, Shui means water. So I picked up the phone and said, O Yao Re Shui. But the, the girl at the other end said, O Pu Chitao, I don't understand. Pu Chitao, no understanding. So I went down, I'd written this, this phrase, O Yao Re Shui in my hand so that I came able to read it. So I went to her, looked at my hand, and told her, O Yao Re Shui. And then she said, O Pu Chita Ni the Ingwan. She said, I don't understand your English. That's my Chinese. Okay. Returned to India after six years and started 60 services. Varghese Abraham was a partner till few years ago. We have now Sunil Jagasiya, Raj, and uh, an array of rubber professionals in 60 services. Highlights of the consultancy our consultancy for a PCR and TBR factory in Nigeria, enabling, enabling setting up of a polyphy factory for Hutchinson. Hutchinson, as you know, is the largest non-automotive uh, rubber tire making uh, a company. We set up the polyphy belt factory for them. Development of, uh, of off-the-road motorcycle tire for torturous enduro races. I have a question for you. Is there a society for prevention of cruelty tires? If so, please let me know as I wish to file a complaint against the enduro organizers. Thank you for bearing with me till now. Param, please take over. Uh, first of all, I don't know what word I had to start with, but you know, it's so amazing and hilarious and interesting. You know, it's um, super, sir. And I want to give uh, give claps to you. And it's it's very interesting and uh, your journey. But I I'd like to pose one question to you: Which part of which company or which you really enjoyed? What is your best experience among all the companies you work? Because every product, everywhere you have some uh, colorful journey. Uh, it was in uh, Swastik that I learned uh, a key lesson of my life is that, is that talent, talent density is the most important asset of any company. We, we were, you know, real broke. We didn't have good money. Most of the workers were old. We could hardly recruit talent because it's a small factory. It is just my luck that Manoharan and Rajagopalan joined me. And if Manoharan today, uh, is the the chief of uh, Reliance Geo. You can well understand how could have you ever been in a place like Swasti. But then, like Ayer, you know, he was a, he was actually a salesman from 
Vikrant. And he joined and he had so many products to sell, deal with people in Delhi. And yet, he, I found that a bunch of talented people was the most interesting. And all those uh, from erasers to whatever I was talking to, we had so many funny products to make. And, we, and the aerostat, we sold at one crore and one rupee. Why one crore and one rupee? Because I wanted to have a product which I sold at more than one crore rupee at least. The DGSND said, no, no, please put it. 9,99,999, then in which case the local authority will pass it. I said, no. I knew I had them by the, you know what. So I said, nothing doing more than one crore. It should be more than one crore. That's one crore at once. It was a very uh, le highly learning experience. The other two were more, you know, kind of formal, Fener India, British company. You are doing V-bells and more V-bells and all that stuff. Or uh, when you are in China, it's, I mean, more, we have heard enough Chinese stories anyway. Okay. But as if for answering your question, the most delightful time where I learned only not only treating with people, having an excellent team which did every possible thing which I wanted them to do and happily did it, enjoyed it, is was at Shostak Rubber Product. Okay. You also talked about the, uh, you know, camel shoes. I think you have some story to talk about. I mean, can you brief about the jokes about camel shoes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Since the guy said, you'll give us a development uh, fee. I, at that time, as I said, we were so poor, piss poor. And uh, this 20,000 rupees was a great stuff. So we, I went and told them about this and they went to one mela nearby and took measurements of uh, camels. So we made this shoe. And I took eight shoes to Jaisalmar, where there were this, these camels were there, you know. And uh, the, 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 the camel trainer, you know, he caught hold of its feet, four of them caught hold of four feet. And with great difficulty, they put the foot into the shoe. The camel was bewildered. It just didn't know what to do. It shat, pissed, and, you know, snorted, and, you know, all kind of stuff. And then, one of the camels, I had eight uh, shoes, one of the camels, you know, angrily started, you know, biting at those laces and tearing it apart. The other one, when we were uh, trying to attend to it, other one ran away. It, the, uh, the fellows in that place in Jaisalmar saw one camel running with shoes on, you know, it was hilarious. I wish I had these videos which we can take of the cameras. It was unbelievable. So we got back. Then, uh, then they said the problem is you know those uh, those uh, laces in the front so i got back and said you know they have said these laces are in the front and things like that so we have to make the laces in the back then the the guy who actually built that shoe said sir isko badal di jiye, sir. turn it around by 180 degrees the camel cannot see it <laughs> oh it's super <laughs> So after that, they get used to it, uh, you know, wearing those shoes. Is... As I told you, as I mentioned, the uh, time came in. I was not only running production, I was also, you know, peddling the products. And it was really getting me. And I was uh, I was losing weight and all that stuff. And the owner also wanted to sell off. Great people like Raj Gopal uh, became, you know, he went off into solid tires. Varghese Abraham went to something else. Uh, then uh, Raja, uh, Ra, our Manoharan uh, went to Reliance and uh, places like that. So that re result was uh, that uh, I don't, the fact the company did not last for very long. They had a good, good property in Pune near Kharki and I think it became something else. Okay, thank you. That's actually very interesting, really eye-opening experience that you have and uh, it's very nice thank you very much i invite as part of the program invite you know you the colleagues that you have mentioned also onto the floor onto the platform and they share their you know their own association with you or their experience about um let me okay so i invite one by one there are a couple of uh, colleagues of yours um, on online now so i invite you one by one uh, the first one I invite is Mr. R. N. Rajagopalan, sir. Uh, you know, please uh, open your webcam and uh, also your uh, speaker. So share your uh, remarks about Mr. Srinivasan, sir. Please. Thank go you, ahead. Mr. Prem. I am very happy to be associated here to talk a few words about Mr. Srinivasan, whom I consider is my 
uh, guru having initiated me into much growth in rubber industries. I call Srinivasan a great leader and team builder. To prove that he is a team builder, the day he left Dunlop and joined Swasti, there were 10 other people from Dunlop who resigned the job and came to support Srinivasan in the new venture. It was not a time when the company was Indian, but it was still a UK company and it was still going strong. But so many people have decided to quit that company and come and support Srinivasan in the company is an indication that he is really a leader. To be a leader, he had an inability, an inability to be bossing over. So the moment the, it can't be seen that he is bossing around people. He really acted as a team leader. And he has a knack of introducing the potential of his team to the top management. I will say two examples. One, when in Dunlap Ambatur, he was the engineering coordinator for two factories and having his office in Calcutta. Calcutta factory has placed an order on an Indian company, Richardson Kudos, to supply an insulation calendar and line equipment. Over many months, that could not be successfully run for production and handed over to production department, and the responsibility was still resting with project department. From Calcutta, Srinivasan has told the works manager in Calcutta, you call the guy Rajagopalan from Ambatur factory, he would be able to set things right and you would be solving the problem, which much of the team in Calcutta head office is talking about. So when I was not eligible for uh, air travel, my ticket was arranged up and down and I went to Calcutta. Luckily, to prove his confidence right, I was able to set right thing in the scheduled time. But before departure, Srinivasan requested the worst manager, why not Raju Opal and visit head office also before returning to Chennai. So he arranged a car from the factory to go to Calcutta. I went there and he read the ticket and gave me a pleasant surprise that I will be traveling back in an Airbus. In those days, Indian Airlines has just introduced the Airbus and instead of having come in Boeing, I didn't return in the Boeing but I returned in an Airbus. Such pleasant surprises he will be always giving. It is innumerable and many other people would be able to watch for it. Then what happened was this made people to take note of me. Then when Aram Bandari, the works director, wanted to increase the productivity of truck and bus tires, he assigned the job to the factory engineer to see that maintenance problems are eliminated, no breakdowns in man, uh, tire curing, and gave permission to replace the defective diaphragm walls and also replace all the old pipelines associated with it. And when they were looking for a person who would be in charge of this project, Aram Bandari was told that I will be handling that. Then with an exclusive piping contractor, taken for this purpose from outside. I coordinated with the engineering personnel in Dunlop and they did the job. Then subsequently, when two of the electrical engineers who came to project office resigned within few months, they were thinking of recruiting a third one. Then factory engineer told, don't recruit a third project engineer for electrical. Raju Gopalan will do the job under the guidance of chief electrical engineer, Mr. Yelumulai. So I was donning the role of an electrical engineer for about a couple of years. Then when I was leaving Dunlop and joining Mr. Srinivasan to go to Swasti, he has introduced me to one of the joint managing directors of Sundaram Industries Limited at that time. My capability in a very peculiar way. That gentleman was looking for a person who would be able to do a gearbox alteration to his Fiat car, which he had a driver to run it in a race. 
So what Srinivasan did was, next week, Mr. Raju Gopalan is joining. He is coming from Dunla. If he says that it could be done, it can be done. Otherwise, take it granted that nobody else would be able to do. So when I landed in TVS, my first job was not my assigned job, but making this gear for the race car, racing purpose. I took the gear, told him, if possible, I will try, but I am not confident. I will come back to you within a couple of days and went to gear manufacturers. One after the other, they told me, this already we have seen this product. The problem was posed to us and we have regretted and it's not possible to do it. Then I took a chance of not making two gears on a single sap, integral with the sap. I made one large gear integral with the sap then made the smaller gear separately, put it on a keyway and then welded it. After having welded it, in order to mitigate any problem that may arise, I approached a metallurgist in Lucas TVS. He told me, you take the service of the heat treatment there, you can uh, stress relieve of the welding, then you can harden the teeth also. Then having completed that, I gave it to Sundaram Motors in Mount Road, where the lapping was done, and then handed over the gear assembly as good as possible, looking similar to the sample I was given, where the gear ratio has to be changed with different number of teeth. I'm not sure whether that was run in the race, whether it won the race or not. By then I was in Pune, but one thing it happened, that joint managing director after having seen me and taking up this assignment promised i will go to us for technology absorption for one of his new project and i will be seeing the olympics 1984 in los angeles second he gave the power of attorney to me for one of his companies to represent him his company for the defense establishments in pune so this is not just achieved by what I have done for them. This is only the way Srinivasan has introduced. It has resulted in this. Then as Mr. Srinivasan was telling, we ran into certain difficulties in Swasti. At the time, the TVS management were looking at an American collaboration to start a solitaire factory. Srinivasan again referred to the management that I am the right person to head the project and I was sent there to take up the project. From then, day onwards from 1988 after four years in Swastik, I started specializing in solitaires and my entire career belongs to the support Mr. VS has provided me and the way he has introduced me, my capabilities to the top management. Thank you very much for this opportunity, Mr. Prem. Thank you, VS. Thank you, Raj. You are a brother. Okay. Very nice. Yes. So VSC is a real uh, buddy and support, a strong supporter to you. That's nice. That's right. That's right. Thank you very much. And I invite our next colleague of him. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rajagopal, once more. Yeah. Uh, sure. Now I invite uh, uh, Dr. Thao, uh, Dr. Thao Mani. He's also worked with um, uh, Mr. Vishnu Vasan, sir. Hi. Okay. Your speaker, please open your speaker, Dr. Thomani. Okay. You're yes, on. Hi. Is it audible? Yes, it is audible. Go ahead. Thanks. Thank you, Param, for creating this opportunity to talk about my guru, my guy, my class member, Mr. V. Srinivasan, fondly known as Mr. V.S. Okay. I joined Fenner in 1986, uh, myself along with uh, my uh, classmate, Mr. Palini Nalan. Uh, at that time, Fenner was a British company. It had a very traditional uh, company, very much controlled by few people. Everything, you need to get approval. Uh, like uh, the government office, uh, high level of bureaucracy, everything has to be approved by <laughs> Otherwise, nothing will move around, OK? Uh, as he mentioned, the company was in loss. had a turnover of nearly 30 crores with the last of three crores. Uh, the blame was put on the, the British managing director, Alex Evans. Of course, everybody contributed for, but he took the responsibility for the last, uh, for making the company into the last, taking the company to the last. So we were young engineers um, looking for opportunities to work hard and learn something new. 
that time, I think as he mentioned, uh, Mr. Williams was brought into uh, the JK Wound Fender in 1988 as an executive director to rehabilitate it, re rehabilitate the Fender India Limited. Under his leadership, really, uh, he built a very good team. The team of talented people, young people, trustworthy people who are willing to work very hard and deliver and uh, committed to deliver things. The team really put a lot of hard work and delivered many things. The next year onwards, the company started making profit. Of course, uh, the leadership also very, very dynamic. Mr. Asik Kuta was driving us very hard. He used to give a tough time to us. He used to look for uh, results every day. Okay, every day he used to have a review meeting at 10, 10 30 in the morning. Of course, uh, under Mr. V. Srinivasan, we all used to be very enthusiastic, very dynamic, very creative, very innovative. We say everything is possible, nothing is impossible in this world. <laughs> With this kind of attitude, we used to take every challenge. Of course, we used to fail and get a <laughs> scolding from Mr. Kuta. <laughs> we never came up our uh, attempt to uh, take the responsibilities and deliver it. We delivered. Of course, we failed many things also. Uh, one of the things which I wanted to highlight it here is uh, after Mr. V. Sinivas and uh, John Fender, he wanted to introduce a new product on the quarter fabric. Uh, this is called so called KK 200 KK <laughs> 400 fabrics for float uh, applications. But this company had a culture of looking for a technology from outside. It never developed a technology at its own. Whenever they tried to develop, like cars and aprons, there was a new product uh, uh, developed in uh, Fender uh, under the leadership, leadership of Mr. Lakshmi Narayan, but it was not, never successful. Like that here also, whatever the hard work he put in, uh, the company, the workforce was not willing to absorb the, uh, the technology and deliver the products. Okay, always they came with some kind of excuses. So in, despite all of our best efforts, things were not uh, moving forward. We had a few setbacks. But at the same time, whatever the products, uh, they had a leadership, like V-Bills, oil seals, and amul rubber products. They were working very hard. We were uh, expanding the range of products. We were increasing the productivity, capacity. A lot of efforts were put in on the cost reduction, reducing rejection and all. In fact, we challenged the, the trade union. Uh, they agreed for increasing the productivity, but uh, they asked us to demonstrate that whatever the productivity norms you set in, you first will deliver, they demonstrated that it's possible to achieve it. And then really it was a tough time. Normally in Fender, the shift starts in the midnight, on Sunday midnight, 12 o'clock. The workers, they went there, they refused to work and give the productivity. <laughs> Myself, Mr. V. Sinwa, we all went there. We took the control of the mixing department. We were running the Banbury, <laughs> mixing with all the things. Somehow we were able to produce productivity, <laughs> what we put in the house. We demonstrated that it was possible. <laughs> okay. While in the workers union also, they agreed to our terms and conditions, they delivered the product. What I wanted to say here, is a tough, uh, whatever he committed, he delivered it, whatever he promised. He encouraged the team and, and nurtured the talents so, so that the team always del delivers it. He was not depending on his individual, he was always believing on the team. The team really delivered a lot of things. Similarly, he took a lot of initiatives to introduce uh, new projects, uh, particularly for forces. In 1989, 90s, I think, he prepared a nice report. I also contributed something to prepare a nice uh, voluminous report on horses, <laughs> different kinds of horses. This was. <laughs> <laughs> they have to laugh at all the things. <laughs> Very nice report, <laughs> highlighting the potentials. Nanla was closed. The product was not available in the market. Okay. Fenner is having excellent brand name. So introducing a hoses will be additional product. will be introducing, uh, increasing the turnover and all. But somehow, the company strongly believed in only pro prone technology. Uh, they, they don't want to get into a new, a new new product development. So the product which was the project which was initiated in 1990s uh, or 80s, late 80s, was shelved till uh, I think till a few years back. Now Fenner has invested heavily on the horses. They are producing horses. What you projected long back, now they are realizing it. They invested. <laughs> now horses are part of the Fenner's product portfolio. So the kind of vision he set in <laughs> it took nearly 30 years to realize it <laughs> into the uh, Fenner's product portfolio. Uh, really, he is a very nice, encouraging uh, gentleman. I enjoyed working with him. Uh, whenever we have any difficulties, whenever we approach him, he used to have a positive approach. He always used to come with some kind of ideas. The ideas may be successful, may not be successful, but ideas always there. There was no depth of ideas. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Even in, in Chennai also, I used to approach him. <laughs> he extended a lot of support to me, including Mr. Raju Gopalan. I thankfully acknowledge his support. Uh, I wish him a long, long, very happy uh, life. And I wish him to continue his professional service to the rubber industries. With a short few words, I wish him, I thank him, thank you, and thank Mr. Param for giving this opportunity to talk about Mr. Mr. Srinivasan, who is my guru. Thank you.
Thank you all. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Thamani. Any words to uh, Mr. Mr. Smith, uh, Srinivasan, sir? Any words to uh, Dr. Uh, Thamani? Yeah, we used to interact very frequently. Okay, we have a lot okay. of private conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let I go with other other. Okay, thank you, Prem. I will close my video. I invite uh, Mr. Uh, Santanam Ganesh, please come forward, sir. Good evening to all. Thanks, Param and uh, Samar. Uh, for giving this opportunity. Uh, Mr. V. Srinivasan fondly called us China, Chinu, and VS. Okay. Why I'm saying is there is a story began because in Dunlop there used to be at least six, seven Srinivasans. So everybody will be giving one name. So he was called Chinu. He is an epitome of simplicity and down to earth. I'm not going to talk about uh, his knowledge part and all, which we have seen. We have seen the product and all. He's a very congenial person, well connected with everybody. He never sees the uh, status or strata. He will be. Well, I have to give an example, say, he used to put the notice board in Marathi, in Swastik. What he used to do is sign in Hindi as V. Srinivasan. So the workers are feeling so great. Oh, Aplach Manush, he's our person. He has written in <laughs> Marathi language. I don't know whether you remember. Okay. Apart from that, he is a very good athlete. So he used to uh, not jog. He used to run 8 to 10 kilometers per day. I don't know whether he is doing now. So there used to be a sports event in Sosti. So you will be part of that. So you will be competing with the workers. There used to be some uh, wrestlers and all. He used to compete with them and he used to get uh, maybe first prize or second prize. So he was very, very uh, down to earth. He used to be a very, very, and another uh, points I would like to talk about is, he's very compassionate, caring, as uh, Mr. Rajagopal was telling, uh, he's always in the limelight. Uh, this is uh, purely on a lighter note. When mm -hmm. Madam Jailalta was the chief minister, he was, she was staying in Poets Garden, and Mr. V. Srinivasan used to stay in Poets Garden, maybe 200 meters from Jailalta's house, I hope. And when the power changed, when Karnani became the chief minister from Gopalapuram, he shifted his residence to Gopalapuram. So whenever his friends used to ask how to come to your house, you say, he used to say, ask for chief minister's house. These guys will be shocked. You ask, me. no, no. From there, it is only 100 meters, 200 meters. Incidentally, uh, new chief minister Stalin is staying in Tenambet and he has also shifted to Tenambet. I don't know whether it's a coincidence or uh, deliberate. I leave it to your choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When I started, uh, uh, when I started doing my rubber technology course in my family, uh, most of them were, uh, say, they used to do either BSc, MSc, or BTEC and uh, BE, uh, BEd, and then become a teacher. So I was the first one to join a rubber technology course. In a rubber technology course, when I say, I know only two. One is, we never used to call it as eraser, we used to call it as rubber only. And another, my uncle, V. Srinivasan, he was working in Dunlap. So I said, his uncle Chitaba, I'm joining this course. He said, don't worry, Srinu is there, he will take care of you. After finishing my course, I went and joined in Swastik Rabbar. So I had a good time. And uh, say, he used to talk in the same language to the chief chemist and to me. So we had a very good time. And when he joined Fenner, I used to be representing uh, pill or nozzle, no rubber chemical. So we used to meet uh, almost uh, once in two months. He used to spend uh, good time with us. Uh, Another point I would like to highlight is uh, uh, this, uh, you should have a healthy life and rubber fraternity and tire fraternity requires his services for next to two decades. Okay, so I wish him a good health, live happily and uh, peacefully. I used to say in Tamil, all the best. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you much. Okay. Okay. I think I see you meet each other quite often. So let's go to the next uh, guest, uh, Mr. R. Manoharan. Okay, Mr. R. Manoharan, can you please uh, come forward mm -hmm. and share? Okay. Let me open your book. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Can yeah. Can you open your yeah. webcam, sir? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying. Okay. Yes. Yes, it's going well. Yeah, it's good. Go on, sir. Okay, yeah. So I first came across uh, Chinu, whom I continue to call him as Chinu. Mr. Chinu was then uh, way back in 1979 when I joined uh, uh, Dunlop. In, uh, first in number two, then I was there for about six months, then I got transferred to Shagan where uh, Chinu was working. So I met Mr. Chinu was in there and uh, that was my uh, start of the association with uh, Mr. Srinivasan. And uh, that time, uh, Dallap, I remember, was uh, going through a lot of, uh, you know, there were a lot of new projects coming up and uh, there were a lot of automation being uh, introduced at uh, various stages of manufacturing process. And uh, I was very closely involved in uh, commissioning and setting up all those systems. And uh, Mr. Srinivasan was the uh, equipment engineer who was ordering those, uh, getting those systems uh, and, uh, uh, you know, putting them in the uh, factory and I was doing all the commissioning, etc. So I enjoyed doing that phase because there was a lot of work to do and a lot of interesting things and, uh, and uh, most of them were all imported uh, from abroad and uh, it had their own uh, state of problems and I enjoyed solving many of the problems. and. Uh, so I continued uh, uh, for almost uh, two years uh, doing all that. And then uh, finally, you know, I was quietly very anonymously doing, enjoying my work and doing a lot of work in uh, uh, troubleshooting and making systems work. And uh, it was uh, Mr. Sin was who used to highlight all those uh, uh, work I used to do. And finally that resulted in my getting selected for going for a training in, uh, Fort Dunlop in UK and that was uh, that came even as a surprise to me because <laughs> when I was chosen because normally what used to happen was uh, people with about the tradition was that you know uh, about you, if you've been working there for 15 years or so then you get your turn to go abroad and get trained or so whereas I jumped the queue I was hardly two years old at that time in Dunlop but even then I got an opportunity to go abroad and I, I still I remember the whole scenario and I owe a lot to Mr. Srinivasan for that. Uh, it was not my work alone, it was uh, Mr. Srinivasan's representation uh, who represented me to the management about my work and uh, I, I owe a lot to Mr. Srinivasan for that and uh, he used to mentor me. He was Ever since I met him, he was my mentor and I remember even uh, when I traveled to UK, he gave me, his, uh, took me through a complete uh, course of, you know, how to pack my even <laughs> luggage and where to write down all the important numbers those days, you know. It was not easy. There was no credit card. There was no phones or cell phones. So it's very difficult. If you lose yourself, then one can be in trouble, you know. So he, he tutored me how to, you know, where you keep a duplicate numbers, where you store it in the... <laughs> Uh, diary and one more backup for the same. So I remember the whole lot of thing and how to behave. Uh, I mean, how to conduct oneself and uh, take the opportunity to learn more when you go there and will meet. Uh, he told me who all I'll be meeting there when I go there. So it was a, a very important guidance. I will never uh, uh, forget that. You know, so it, it came in so handy when I was there first time. You know, visit that too. Way back in 1982, you can remember. Uh, there was hardly very limited amount of money used to be given to us. So you've got to be very good at managing your funds. And all that was, you know, very meticulously where to go and stay, how to stay in the uh, kind of uh, paying just accommodation. Uh, all that, uh, you know, told me very meticulously. I wrote down the whole process. I still remember, I recall that very vividly even today. And then, <clears throat> so that was the... Dunlop experience and then soon after that I left Dunlop, I joined JK but then again rejoined uh, Swastik when uh, Sinwasan approached me 
to join swastik explain what uh, uh, is there in store for me there so I, I used to wonder what i'm going to do there because i was totally in a different line i was wondering whether i'll have enough uh, uh, kind of a work to do in uh, uh, swastik but uh, sino wasn't being a very affable person and uh, you know you, you used to trust a person who works with him a fully will give a very good team a team builder and a team leader and uh, totally will trust you and give you all the freedom so it was purely on those uh, grounds that i said fine and then you know quit my job in ak and came to uh, swastik it was a different experience in swastik but nevertheless i learned a lot there with uh, a different totally different uh, environment and uh, I did another stint of about four, four and a half years there, and uh, that was the time uh, I closely worked with uh, Shasin Wasan for the second time. So then, throughout my association with him, I remember Mr. Shasin Wasan is a very voracious reader. I still can uh, cannot. Uh, I mean, I still recall he reads almost one book a week or two books a week, and that very voracious. Reader, so I picked up uh, the habit of reading from him. Though I am not turned out to be a voracious reader like Sino was in, but nevertheless I had the very uh, basics of uh, making the habit of reading came from him. And very wide different subjects used to read. I also used to read, and now I continue doing that. I, whenever I read the book, uh, I always recall uh, Sino was in the association about uh, from whom I picked up this habit of reading. You know, so I used to, in fact. Uh, borrow sometimes uh, books like economics what business uh, review then uh, uh, even uh, several other magazines like discovery magazine these are too expensive to buy those days on my own so i used to borrow from mr sinwasan and read all that and some of them were so useful uh, going through them. so this is one of the you know traits i picked up from uh, mr sinwasan and uh, then i continued i met him in several other places like thailand when i was working there sin was and came over there so we had so almost two years he was there so we used to meet sometimes there in uh, bangkok <laughs> and uh, after that uh, when uh, i was traveling to and sin was in uh, china uh, working for pearl river rubber corporation in gonsho so i i i went, on, I went to china on a holiday i did i did meet him there also <laughs> that was uh, another uh, place where I, out of india i met uh, sinwasan there and uh, i remember uh, all that vividly i recall all that so he was a very good uh, leader and nice to work with him and uh, uh, i picked up a lot of traits from him which uh, today whatever i'm uh, there uh, today uh, it's uh, i owe a lot to him for that whatever i have been uh, able to do so far and uh, I'm still working. I'm in my eighth year of uh, ninth year of extension in uh, uh, Reliance, and um, it's all uh, the mentoring done by Mr. Sinuas, and that uh, I could uh, shape up myself to this. And thanks a lot to all that, uh, Sinuas. And so fine, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Manu. Thank you very much, Mr. Manuas. Thank you very much. Very nice. I invite uh, next uh, Professor uh, P. N. N. Iyer, sir. Uh, please come forward. Good evening, everybody. Am I reasonably audible? You are fine, sir. Go ahead. Yes. All right. I've never had a problem with uh, volume, either in yes. decibels or liters. Yes. That's not exactly one of my areas. My, my association, my joyful association with Srinivasan sir goes back 37 years. I joined Swastik Rubber on 31st of October 1984. And within two hours of my joining, a holiday was declared because Indira Gandhi had been assassinated that very morning. And there I was walking back, and uh, a car came and uh, stood near me. And the gentleman in the car asked me, where are you going? Can I drop you somewhere? This was within the factory near the gate. 
So I told him, sir, I'm, I'm staying at so-and-so hotel. I have joined only today. And uh, unfortunately, it has been declared a holiday. So I'm going back to the hotel. And he said, uh, why don't you come with me for a cup of coffee? I said, uh, I have my wife waiting in the hotel and she is carrying. And he said, no problem. We'll go to the hotel, pick up your wife and we'll go home and let me welcome you into this company. Uh, it was a very warm welcome. We got to know each other's family and a little background. Uh, I was uh, recruited as a regional sales manager to be posted in Delhi. And I had been in the factory. For, I was to be in the factory for a whole week to familiarize myself. So I came in, um, went through my orientation, etc., and I was posted under the national marketing manager, general manager marketing. I had been in the tire industry for a very long time. Tire industry is a dog eats dog world. You sell one pair of one, just one pair of truck tires, and champagne bottles get opened up in the evening. And uh, it was so bad because it was a terrible surplus after a horrendous scarcity. So most of the people in the tire industry did not know anything about sales because they were very busy allocating. There was nothing to sell. If you have a tire, you have a stampede outside your shop. People willing to pay you a premium, people willing to pay you an advance. And then came the main uh, change. Uh, George Fernandez became the industries minister. He wanted to break the cartel of the Western companies. And he succeeded because he brought in a lot of Indians into the game. Uh, one Sardarji and two Marwadis. Sardarji is Ronak Singh, Apollo Tires. And two Marwadis, Modi's and JK's. And uh, the good thing was none of them could get along with each other. So competition was the automatic result. And the end result of competition is always the benefit to the consumer. He benefits from competition. It was not four white men who sat in a five-star hotel in the, in the evening sipping scotch whiskey and discussing how to produce less and less tires so that the market has more and more shortage. Even tires which went on ice cream trolleys were in short supply. There was a size called 3, 358 which went into the original Vespa scooter. Massive shortage. When I came out and got into this industry where they made everything except tires, you name it, only tires and condoms was not being made in swastik rubber. I can say this with all the confidence at my command. You name it and swastik will make it. It had a menu card which ran into a manual. <laughs> and it was not a salesman's challenge. It was a salesman's misery. It was a multi-product, multi-segment, multi-sector, and multi-this and multi-that. Now, and I was working under a person who was a perfect boss. A perfect boss is an occupational hazard. And he had come from a company which was into industrial products. And he knew only about industrial products, an engineer himself. And he did not know about consumer products. If you tell him Sando is the ultimate eraser in the world and it is made in swastik rubber, he would end up looking cute. He'll say, but that is called Sando. How can it be made in swastik? Then you have to tell him there is a corporate brand and there is a product brand. And anybody who tried to tell him something naturally becomes an enemy. So I was going through a very difficult time. Anyway, uh, one learns to survive such people. It is not that one is always fortunate to have a leader. You also get stuck with bosses. If you don't <laughs> mind my saying so. 
if you don't mind my saying so, two subordinates are discussing their boss. And one said, I have a boss who's a pain in the neck. And the other guy says, I have a much lower opinion. <laughs> so I did reasonably well, and the company thought it proper to promote me as national marketing manager. And I was posted in the head office. And sooner than later, I was transferred. There were two verticals. One was called the commodity products, which was into automotive products, anything from a very simple thing like a grommet, a bush, uh, an oil seal, or a bump stopper, to a high pressure hydraulic hose, uh, two products like uh, gum boots and uh, snow ankle boots which in North India is called Sano Uncle Boots, etc., etc. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I did well in this, uh, and it was thought proper that I should be transferred to a more prestigious division, which was called DEMAS. DEMAS was Defense, Maritime, Aerospace, and Specialty Products. And immediately, I started feeling, feeling terribly inadequate because defense, most of the products are classified and they are driven around very high technology. Maritime, global standards, because the International Maritime Organization is very unforgiving in their standards. Aerospace, oh my God. And specialty products. So my shift from a commodity product segment to a specialty product. And then I was told that I'm going to be re reporting to a gentleman who is from IIT Madras and his designation is Executive Director, Technology and Engineering. I didn't sleep. Because generally IITNs, <laughs> Uh, they don't talk to anybody unless you are technically reasonably above average. And here I am, I'm an economist. In my own domain, domain I have a small toehold. I'm a gold medalist. And I, I'm extremely passionate about economics. Now, for me, the cultural fit into that environment headed by a person and I also come from a community called the Palakkada years, where I'm, forgive my using their accent, if you are not IIT, IIM, or IAS, you are IAO. <laughs> so I belong to the IAO category, and I was to report to a gentleman who is executive director, technology, and engineering. Anyway, I remembered the first day when he invited me and my wife to his house, and I said, "All, everything is all right, but uh, he's a friendly person. So who knows, he may even tolerate me. So I came in with trepidation, anxiety, and a terrible inferiority complex. And he was executive director. No, I was expecting to be executed, my career to be executed under his direction. I don't know, somehow he read my mind, I think, because he started putting me through in every meeting, natural, nitrile, EPDM, silicon, white on. These were my baby steps with which he started with me. 37 years back, I was not very, very mature and I was probably much less uh, into understanding these kind of things, which make a lot of sense to me today. He said, tomorrow when you have to head a company, you should be knowing a little bit about everything. Otherwise, you won't be able to supervise people. So he started building me up. So I grew from sales. Sales is all about contact, impact, and transact, period. That's it. 
That's exactly what the waiter also does. He contacts you on the table. He makes an impact about the description of the stuff in the menu and it transacts, period. But marketing, I quote the father of uh, management, Peter Drucker, all business is marketing and innovation. He put me through the steps of marketing. I grew into a marketing man under his tutelage. I would still say I'm his protege proudly. We went through extremely tough situations together. In DCM Toyota, which he was referring, we had a group of uh, panelists who were more like a firing squad because no matter what you tell them, they will say Toyota is right, everything else is wrong. <coughs> and what were we called for? For an operationally unimportant part called the mud flap. You know that thing that flaps behind the tires in every car? Insignificant. But they put us through grilling. And they said, how do you make sure that the curing of the rubber is uniform when you have a mold which is uh, almost squarish or at the most a rhombus? Immediately without batting an eyelid, Mr. Srinivasan sir came up and he said, we know how to build a serpentine path through which the stream will pass. Oh my God. All those chaps from Japan who had done vendor development all over the world, they were taken aback. It was literally a Nagaratnam passage. <laughs> Serpentine path. Immediately they arranged, they said, you are approved as a vendor and we don't want a pilot sample. We will place bulk orders on you. See, I can understand if it is an operationally critical product, like a gasket timing belt cover, which is between the cylinder head and the engine block. That has to have heat tolerances, abrasion tolerances, uh, anti-aging properties, and you name it. This was a mud flap. But then, that was one of my early lessons in what happens to organizations which are brand arrogant. When you're a Toyota, Everybody else is unimportant. That was a very big learning for me. And then he used to coach me on an extremely difficult product, which was coated with polypropylene. It took me three days of practice to pronounce polypropylene because it will become polyporolene, polypropylene, etc. So I wrote it down like an imposition. And that was a, that was a very tough product on rubberization of an industrial fabric, KK600. It is no longer classified, so I can speak about it. We used to have doctored samples and the inspectorates will come. It could be a very insignificant superseded major, or it could be a general Shiv Dasani, who is the Lieutenant General of Directorate General of Quality Assurance. We also lived through Terrible guys, like a man who was group captain Anup Singh Sethi. He retired as an air marshal. He was a medical doctor who became an engineering inspection chief. So we, we have lived through this. And to explain the product to them without a thick accent, Mr. Srinivasan, sir, would coach me. Nanu, ni pretty solle. Absolutely holding me by my finger and walking me through a mock inspection parade. And I always thought I could never do it. I always looked at him with very anxious eyes. And he would keep telling me, I know that you can do it. I have more confidence in you than anybody else. You don't worry. Don't leave it to a D-gay or a dais. We had two wonderful people. In all companies, we meet hilarious colleagues. They were among them. A simple thing like a 
railway air brake hose. It was not in defense. It was not in maritime. It was not in aerospace. It was not in specialty product. But we had a very major problem in the product development area because it was not copybook development. It required a lot of innovation. And here we have Mr. Srinivasan who never looks at the boundaries of his task. He walked across and he innovated and he came up with a solution. So finally, when the RDSO people, Research and Development of Standards Organization Railways, when their super boss came because brake hose is a life-saving equipment. So the inspections are done by the super boss. That is the sensitivity. It is between two compartments. You must have all seen it. Between two bogies, you'll have something like an elephant trunk. It is a vacuum hose meant for applying brakes in railways. So I've gone through that. So I'm a great believer after having worked and I continue to work with him because every opportunity I get to meet him, I'm full of questions like a very curious child and he's never tired of giving me answers. He's never thought we have played our game, we are bored out, our innings is over. Why are we discussing all this? No, 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 never. Never. Everything about innovation. Now look at these spectacles. When I saw the innovation done on these spectacles, the only person I thought is Mr. Srinivasan, and it was not restricted to rubber industry. Look at this innovation. This has got a magnet here. Here. Yeah. So I reached a conclusion. Later on, I graduated into marketing. Later on, I became, uh, got into general management. I went on to become managing director of GEL Pro before I started my second innings as an academic. I reached a conclusion because as you mature, you reach certain conclusions. One of my favorite conclusions for which Srinivasan sir is responsible is, if you are not a mentor, you are a tormentor. <laughs> Very simple. And I have been teaching this to fresh MBAs. I've been teaching this to people with 25 years in corporates. There are nine rules which distinguish whether you are a manager or a mentor. Number one, you have to be a very thorough manager first. And then you have to go beyond to be a mentor. It starts with the rule of empathy. I'm sure he empathized just looking into my eyes that this chap is trembling in his trouser because he's not a qualified engineer and he's having to work under me, who is a renowned engineer having worked with a top multinational. It is very humble on his part to uh, uh, say his uh, bio professional biography in extremely humble terms. But I know that he's a person of extraordinary accomplishments, but his humility is such. So I think he understood my, uh, my anxiety level as to, see, I belong to the middle class. A career progression is most important to me. Otherwise, even my wife won't look at me. These are problems of social pressures which we all face. Because qualification is qualification. Education is education. That is a big difference between efficiency and effectiveness. And as they say in engineering, if you are not effective, you are defective. Even the buffalo that goes round and round in the villages tied to a common lever, providing leverage of mechanical advantage to a crushing equipment in between. In Tamil, they call it Chekkumad. In Hindi, it is called Koluka Bell. That fellow is very efficient because from recruitment to retirement, he is doing the same job and he's going around in circles. So if you ask him, are you coming or going? He'll say, I have no idea. I'm going around in circles. 
And this is the story of many professionals who have not been fortunate to work under people like Srinivasan sir, who understood your potential, built you up for further responsibilities, tolerated your mistakes, handheld you. It is another thing that is a great rubber technologist. We are talking about eminent personalities in the rubber industry. But the most Thank important you. lesson he taught me is be like rubber, flexible, resistant to abrasion. Don't allow anything to stick on to you. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. It doesn't matter if carbon black is added or not. Remain flexible. Remain useful. Provide an operationally critical value proposition. These are very, very golden, big golden nuggets. None of my degrees, none of my universities have ever taught me these lessons. And people like Mr. Srinivasan, sir, are institutions. They are not individuals. It is not that he was not tough with me. When it came to delivery, he was very clear. There was no compromise. I have been adequately pulled up. I did feel bad about it. Came home, crypt to my wife, which we all do. Generally, we all come down crypt to our wife that if we can manage a wife, we can manage anybody in this world. You know, that's a comfort of you giving to a wife. But then you he kept telling me that if you are put in 10 years service in any in any career, you are not compartmentalized into the area of specialization with which you graduated in college. Please. After 10 years, you're not an engineer, economist, chartered accountant, or shattered accountant. It doesn't matter. You automatically become a very wholesome, good executive professional. You have to know what is critical in every function. And he demonstrated it to me. I've seen him involved in extremely tough cost negotiations, looking into the, the minute test of micro detailing. What is the batch cost? What will be an individual cost? And what will be the price volume ratio? I've seen him discussing issues of vendor development for micro components. There are so many times when vendors have come up to Mr. Srinivasan. And Mr. Srinivasan, he doesn't speak Marwadi. He doesn't speak Gujarati. He doesn't speak Sindhi. And most of the vendors, they come from these three communities. Most of them are high school or primary school dropouts. So he cannot talk at a level which they can understand. He cannot discuss technology with them. But he had to have rheostatic adaptation to sit down with them, explain things in a manner that this is how this product needs to be designed. And this is going to be a raw material for this product. And the end use of this product is this. Oftentimes, he hired me as an interpreter because I am a polyglot. I speak several Indian languages. One had to sit down and listen. So when we say eminent personalities, it is not simply left to their erudition or experience. Eminence is something else. What is the difference you have made to several people's career around you? How did you ensure that you had no psychophants? You had people who genuinely came, learned from you, respected you, worked with you, supported you. This is what Srinivasan sir has taught. I don't know how many of us, I'm only one of the many, many, whose ever life he has touched, he's gone out of his way. That level of empathy for the person, ability to understand the person's attitude, aptitude, ability to acquire new skills and adaptability.
these are the four A's of Jack Welch. So Mr. Prem, uh, Param Prasad Rao, first thing is I thank you very much. It's a very laudable thing that you're doing. Eminent people don't come with any product, substance, or subject specialization. Eminent people come because they're eminent personalities. They are made of different stuff. So I hope I've not exceeded my allotted time. I don't know what my allotted time was, but I had to speak my heart out. And uh, Mr. Param Prasad Rao, I'm very grateful to you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Actually, I didn't want to break any sentence of you. Really thought provoking. I'm so glad to know that, you know, today I had a chance to talk to, you know, hosting Mr. Reese Universe. And, and I see the, the influence you have on the, you know, uh, on your career and your growth and which a lot to learn. Actually, you put a nice words. That's why you, when you took, I was, ex I was thinking where to break you, but uh, I don't want to break at all because everything you're saying is, it's very important to all of us, young people like us, take whatever you take away from Mr. Srinivas and you know, you're passing to us. That's thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. I know. Um, you're being, the, you're yeah. being very magnanimous, uh, Mr. Rao. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, let's I invite um, our next colleague of him, um, uh, Mr. E. Palinathan. Mr. E. Palinathan, uh, can you come, on, come forward? You are on screen already, yeah. Can you open your audio also, please? Yeah. Yes. Okay, go on. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, good good evening. evening. It's nice meeting you at this forum. I thank Mr. Pray for giving this opportunity. I'll cut short my timing. It's a great opportunity uh, of working with Mr. Mr. Srinivasan. See, to, to, to explain, when we joined uh, to Fire India, Madurai, we were interviewed and the uh, end of the interview, we said that we don't work quite so much of qualified persons in this company, small company like that, the message was there. So that was a kind of an invitation. <laughs> As Mr. V is facing the, in number two, see, I understood most of the graduate training when they join, the invitation will be like this only. <laughs> so, uh, when we joined in Fender India in 87, immediately when the JK took over, Mr. V. Srinivasan came as a technical director. He's a highly motivated person. The way that we are very much uh, thankful that uh, the management has taken an IIT it's because we, we both from IIT and we saw uh, our executive directors also from IIT. We are they are very much uh, uh, excited. And the way in which he motivated us is, uh, is something very great. See, we, we took all the challenges. He's a man who is able to uh, talk, talk on any science, any technology, able to convince us, and given a lot of guidelines, in fact. You know, he has given full faith on us. That's, that's one of the things uh, which we, uh, we can never forget. So he has, he has guided us how to make the formulation and also how to make the coding. Even today, 30 years, he was telling me, all natural papers start with 1,000s, all nitrates start with 2,000, all the opening start with 3,000, like that. He, he's already started the seeding. So with that uh, 30, 40 years, we have run the, all the computing division in Madurai, uh, Madurai and uh, Fender India. So the way he used to guide and he used to have a lot of faith. And, and he also motivates a lot and also he challenges the technology. See, if I remember when we joined, we were, when we were interviewed, we were taken for, for the post of a, a development assistant. See, they wanted to give a post as assistant. So that itself was very really discouraging when we attended our interview. When we are about to get um, confirmed, you know, after seeing this designation, Mr. V.S. was so telling us, and he said, no, what is this designation? It's not good. We'll make it as a part of the development engineers. This simple designation itself has motivated us. He made Mumbar at that Mumbar. That was so motivating to tell my wife at the younger age. See, I became a development engineer rather than telling I'm a development asset. <laughs> so thank you very much. Ages, those things have added a lot of value. Uh, God has given the grace of you as a boss to me. So next to that, in any working environment, any difficulty, you have to understand the, uh, the, the inter, inter, interpersonal relationship. Accordingly, he'll advise the work. 
suitably so that there is no unnecessary friction around among the people and he always used to protect us he used to always motivate us telling that you are the two pillars of the fener india and then at that day we took a lot of challenges in the company and many many times he has also given an enormous challenge when we used to develop a polyrebate belt whenever we cut a polyrebate belt there is also between one belt to other belt there is always a gap about one mm plane is cut after the again another belt is made he gave me a challenge i don't want any full width of the belt should be full width of the sleeve should be made as a belt this was his challenge he told me if you solve this problem i will send you to uk this was his challenge he told me so i thought uh, uh, months and months together finally we achieved so at that time we have started without any end raised the entire sleeve was converted to a belt making a diamond cutting methodology which we have implemented subsequently chinese have made it also the and the, the side grinding cutting machines also have come so that way he has got an uh, he has got a knack of convincing people and a very good technique he can convince anybody as he was mentioning the serpentine route which is very very good to convince the <laughs> tcm data same way he used to convince any person he blends uh, he is a very good marketing plus techno commercial person and very human friendly person in fact this is a navaratri time i remember when i was in badurai he called us to navaratri and myself my wife was said the navaratri gulu also said i could recollect those things that way he very friendly and we can approach him for any any issue and he always remembers the people so good and uh, good and he used to advise people and he had given a due respect especially myself and domini we enjoyed the due respect and uh, appreciation for whatever we did so in fact when we made a first ground polymer belt he encouraged let us give the belt to the communists um, also communists was not willing to take our belt but still somehow we are convinced and we uh, sent our polymer ground belt of course it has failed and it is not a revised belt but still it was a challenge you took and give a first uh, ground belt to communists so that way he is highly motivating person we could able to the, we, are, we also made some effort in making the spreading unit in fener india that was a good thing and we used to hold the fabric on the end of domani myself the other end people used to paint and then make some <laughs> take it to other countries it's that was a good experience domani used to tell me very often that experience with the brush so it was all very young and very highly motivating uh, person and uh, in between he has left and he has moved from the technical department now which we are a little bit uh, upset anyway he has come back as an export department and uh, supported us and that way he is uh, working with mr bs is uh, very jolly and highly motivated we don't have to worry what he more on something more on uh, we will not be penalized so he will take it so that kind of a confidence he was building so uh, any superior needs some support and the guidelines support and uh, the younger people will start working that is the thing i have i learned from him to be as a leader you must motivate and absorb the difficulties and uh, and tell the superiors whatever good thing that done the 10% whatever we had done 10% he will tell to our superior 30% 40% he has done well so that way he is a very positive person and very lively i wish and any any other personal invitation during my daughter's marriage also i could not go on personally invite him because i was met in accident i was sent one way post and he is kind enough to visit along with the wife to my daughter's function that way he is a very humorous person i enjoyed associating with him and very knowledgeable he and he is a highly collaborative person he knows who knows what is he the mr v s knows that way i am very thankful my my very good memories uh, for what with mr v s was my wife also felt very very proud that he has got a very great good boss that day i am very thankful to you great i wish we be in this in touch with uh, um, uh, touch with this uh, technology as a tire guru we continue to form this uh, tire group to continue for more time and enjoy thank you sir thank you very much once in a while i can also got an opportunity to see madam also passing through thank you very much for that all my all my regards to <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pandan. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. all the good, nice remarks about Mr. V. Sinuwasan. Uh, we have one more guest here, uh, Mr. K. T. Reddy. Okay, I'd invite uh, Mr. K. T. Reddy come forward. Yes. Okay, can you? 
Mr. Kedi Reddy. Yeah, I am. Okay. You need you need to adjust your camera. Can you please adjust your camera so that people can see you? Mm -hmm. The camera is in back side. One second. I think it'll take some time. Okay, you can express your order. it's all right. You can we can stop your camera, you can say you know convey your message to Mr. V. Sinvasan. Please go ahead. Can you hear? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. I will not take much time actually because uh, all my other panelists have spoken very much about uh, Srinivasan, who has uh, extremely and very excellently given the entire journey in a beautiful way. Now, coming back to our Fender experience, Mr. Sin was mentioned only just probably one line about the tennis experience in the technical department. In fact, during the 10 years from 37 cross turnover and four plus loss, this team comprising of Mr. Srinivasan and other people in the company made almost 250 pros turnover with 40 pros gross profit. That is a great idea contribution by Mr. Srinivasan and team. To talk about Srinivasan, he is a technical person with sales and marketing approach. Always <clears throat> he is a pleasant, open, in fact, humorous and jovial. Why I'm using this word is I know the environment in Fenner during the 90s, Fenner factory. But for Mr. Srinivasan, the entire team could have been probably, you know, felt this all working like 24 hours. Mr. Srinivasan made all the other team members really happy because of his own, the way he led the team. So that's one thing I want to just mention. And as far as uh, his openness is concerned, the very fact he has told his experience in first day, where his friend traveled emergent on an emergent basis from Bombay to Pune, but finally found that he got some few clips from the you know, uh, airlines, which of course Mr. Sin was openly told. Of course, later on they said, you know, apologize and all, but that's how he's always very open. Coming back to, of course, you know, as a person, as a friend, he has been always jovial, always you know, maybe humorous, and makes in our meetings very, very live. In fact, we used to have a meeting at least once in maybe a couple of months in the factory, because I used to stay in Hyderabad, and I used to go to Madurai maybe once in two months, and there in the meeting, probably he's the one person who makes the entire meeting is lively. As a person, well, he, he always, of course, feels young. He keeps jogging. In fact, we always uh, say that, you know, what energy has got, such energy, so that he keeps on, I think, at least you know, eight, eight kilometers per day or more than that, he keeps jogging, even probably at this age. I do not know for the last six months, but he has been doing it. Now, for me, he's, of course, a very good friend and very positive. And one thing I can even tell him, I don't know what my camera is. I want to show something to you. Maybe I have to adjust. There was uh, one event on November 30th, 2019, where, of course, we met in Madras. Mr. Srinivasan was so nice. He said he has got some presentation, a gift for us on that day, which, of course, no, I don't think I can show. So I took it. Actually, it is. The gift, what he got it from the Fenner Pioneer for a number of years back, which of course, without telling anything, he just handed over to me. In fact, that is such a wonderful gift. You should always keep it with him. So I'm keeping this one, one with him, with me, to probably give it back to him when I next meet him, actually. And in terms of um, 
one other thing, of course, he has uh, in my journey of my PhD, Mr. Sin was an alternative part because he also actually as a respondent filled up the questionnaire, which was very, very useful to me. In fact, I could uh, do that one because people like you, Mr. Srinivasan, really helped me, you know, in really giving all the responses, the way of what they feel about the values and the reputation of organization. But with this uh, few, yes, really, yes, he is the eminent professional personality. I wish him all the best for a future course of action. Thank you once again, Mr. Prasad Rao and Mr. V.S. for introducing me for this uh, panel. Thank you so much. Thank you very thank much, you. Dr. Dr. Reddy. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I invited him in the last minute, so we didn't prepare him properly. So thank you again uh, for uh, joining us. You know, sharing your uh, association with uh, about um, Mr. V. Srinivasan. Thank you very much. Um, before you know, we are running out of time, but I would like to wrap it up quickly. And I invited Dr. Summer uh, to come forward, and all of all the panelists to please, you know, open your webcams and. Um, uh, so that um, you know, come on the screen at the same time. Please share your webcams and also open your uh, your audio as well. Dr. Summer, please go ahead. So, first of all, uh, thanks to each one of you for making this function as a very successful one. I really uh, wish my gratefulness to all of you. And uh, Srinivasan, sir, we could learn a lot of things from you. And uh, Professor Ayer, he has given a big light. And we could learn many things out of uh, his speech. Raja Gopalan, sir, has told that how you have mentored him in his journey. Balani, sir, has told that you have also how much passionate and uh, really how much a big leader you are for their career that also we came to know mr ganeshan santanam ganesh one of my friend who has given your contact he only give gave the name of two people first b srinivas and he was saying sinu that time i was not understanding sinu and then he also said uh, D. Srinivasan. Unfortunately, D. Srinivasan, still now we are not able to catch him. But uh, Mr. Ganesh, we have caught uh, your Sinu. And today he is with us. And uh, because of him, we are feeling great today. Both me and Param, we are feeling ourselves really lucky uh, to get people like you. And uh, from the core of our heart, we thank each one of you. Uh, Dr. Reddy, we could not see you. Otherwise, uh, your uh, yes. speech was also very nice. Thanks yes. to each one of you. Over to Param. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, all of you. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, you know, the time and sharing. Um, and before I let uh, go of this program, um, I will ask Mr. Srinivasan um, to come forward to share some of the, uh, you know, some tips for young people. Okay, people like me, I'm still young. Okay, so um, people like me, you know, you, any suggestions how to sustain, how to be progressive in the rubber or tire industries? Srinivasan, sir, please. The thing is, what uh, I needed to say or wanted to say has been uh, best articulated by Professor Ayer and the type of uh, behavior, the kind of uh, leadership, kind of uh, uh, working, uh, um, what shall we say, style, have all been described by each one of you. Palinathan or Taumani or Manoharan, Santanam, Raj, of course, and uh, uh, Dr. Katie Reddy. It's been a delightful journey for me. Uh, I am I feel a bit left out in the sense that I could only speak about the first 25 years and uh, later cruise through the uh, 
the next uh, 25 years, which were in, um, where we did meet uh, a lot of challenges and came through primarily because of the talent. Now, talking about tips to people, talent I have found in this 50 years, talent, you must obtain talent in your team. That's what makes the difference. Adequate is just not enough. You must choose the people who are capable of reaching the sky. It's not good enough. We have four adequate people, who are just ordinary. What shall we say? Uh, it's just average. But are we wanting to be average? Would you like to be called as an average person? No. Talent density. You choose the right team. And you go out of your way, like uh, when I had to steal uh, uh, Manoharan. Manoharan was actually an electrical electronics engineer, higher, but we needed somebody like him in Swaste. I remember having gone to Udaipur and having spoken to him. He wouldn't come from, uh, he couldn't come from uh, JK at that time because JK had a big compound and they used to have, a, you know, a kind of a security. If he, they saw anybody walking with a suitcase, they would stop him and ask him, where, where are you going? Why are you leaving this place? And Manoharan had come and stealthily gave some of the clothes I took, took away with him. And later, we even had to pay a penalty uh, to the same JK group, which I later joined. On the other hand, when I talk about uh, uh, Professor Ayer here, he was just nano to me at that time. And the hilarious incidents and instances they have had, what uh, you have not seen is, is not only a polyglot, he can also sing extremely well. It's a delight to watch his uh, presentations on any subject. The most of the major tire companies in India, or any company in India for that matter, not tire companies, uh, would uh, normally ask uh, Professor Ayer uh, to give a motivational speech. Then we have uh, Manoharan, who has grown. Uh, on to the highest position uh, in uh, in the executive cadre of uh, of uh, uh, Reliance Geo, he is the sounding board for the guys who do actually the operations. If he says okay, then Mukesh Ambani says okay. That's the reason why he was saying he's in the seventh year of extension, not as an advisor or something like that. He is still holding the same post as a senior vice president. Talking of Ganesh, he is such a, you know, for me, he's just like my son of sorts, you know. Uh, very knowledgeable, has been going from one place to another, serving uh, the various uh, people of the tire industry and the rubber industry in particular, and a delight at any time. Of course, both of my Sishyas, Dr. Tomani and Pradhan Nathan, have been of immense support to me. Anything which achieved in uh, Fenner as uh, when I was a, uh, when I was a technical director, or when I later became a senior vice president of, uh, of business development, it's all because of the kind of you know, it's okay to motivate, but the the motive should wait. That's so saying you know, waiting for moti kind of a thing. But they were they were capable of doing it. That's what uh, uh, is of uh, particular significance. Of course, from Mr. K T Reddy, it was because of K T Reddy and his marketing skills that Fenner really grew. We are, we all take claim, we all think that we did it, but he was the leader who took the company from uh, something like a 30 crores turnover and three crores loss to 300 crore turnover. And later he pursued his academic, uh, uh, you know, want of wanting to become uh, a doctorate. And uh, just uh, about six months or about one year ago, I think, uh, he got his doctorate uh, in marketing at this age. That's, that is tenacity. Uh, thank you, Param. You have done a fantastic job. It's, I Going through this uh, uh, pre-presentation thing, I saw the kind of you know, details to which you are going. And that's the reason why these seminars are successful. I hope it does attract more and more people. Our uh, friend Tomani now is again one who has gotten away. You know what? From I was surprised. He is now the owner of a metal processing 
uh, factory. With the snap of a finger, he could have been a chief consultant for all the tire companies. And he was the guy who was the as the director of uh, what is that uh, 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 rubber research, uh, uh, All India Rubber, All India Rubber. Uh, this is IRMRA. IRMRA. He was sitting yes. right across the table from the likes of uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Ra Ramat Singh and uh, Singhania and John. And mind you, and then he went to Aramco. And then this, this I wanted to see this bugger, <laughs> but excuse me, I know him so well. And he has come and taken over a, a factory and he's a chief supplier to place people like Sundaram Fastener, just about every automotive product. Uh, he's now buying from uh, them. And Parinathan has set up a fantastic uh, uh, oil seal and uh, rubber molding product factory uh, in uh, right from the start in Chennai. And uh, it's unbelievable. I should thank you. Uh, uh, people are at last. Dr. Reddy, yeah, yeah. I can see you. I'm very yes, happy. <laughs> this looks like a lawyer's uh, cabin, man. With so many books behind you. Good. Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you and uh, Samar for this opportunity. Uh, I am I'm delighted and I hope uh, the people who endured this uh, lecture uh, were also, you know, uh, happy with whatever time they spent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rinovasan. It's a really, really wonderful event today. Uh, I'm sure that all of the participants who join, who will be viewing later on, uh, a lot of beneficial, and not only from the you and also from the panelists, the way you mentor them, you benefit, you know, you train them. Uh, it's on, on, you know, it's really good. And um, thank you very much. And we are very, very much fortunate to host this event. And thanks again to, you know, Mr. Ganesh Hello. to, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. One second. Thank you. Okay, let's, uh, EP, uh, Dr. Thomani, go ahead, please. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Dr. Reddy wants to say something about them since uh, um, he wasn't. Yeah, Kyo Johnson okay. is our uh, long associated yeah. colleague. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, sorry, okay. actually, there was some problem in the camera. I did not know till yesterday in a Zoom meeting, I used to see the number of Zoom meetings. But today, I don't know what happened. So please, go please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Time for me, actually, to really correct that one now. Anyway, I have finished with our to speak, but I think probably next time, much better I can think of. <laughs> thanks, thanks, for Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Guys, thank you all. Thank you all for the participants, yeah. all the panelists, one more time, um, you know, to, for this event, uh, you know, for joining this event. And I'd like to share, before I end this program, I'd like to share our future eminent persons. Uh, who will be in the, in the schedule and uh, Mr. I.K. Bahal is in the next uh, 15 days time and on 23rd October um, He'll be nominating him. He specialized on the canvas bells and uh, we have Mr. R. Mohan uh, Is uh, on the 6th of November Mr. K. Shiva Shiva Loganathan K. S. Logan or Loga and is on the 20th November and also we have a guest uh, invited uh, eminent person is from Sri Lanka Kulatunga Raj, uh, Mr. Kulatunga Rajapaksa he is a, a chairman of the DSI group um, and also Mr. Sudhir Gautam. We are scheduling some dates are not finalized. We are keep on adding. Actually, this is for us. Um, um, it's not a business oriented for an event. This eminent, eminent personality webinar is all about, for me, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, something kind of the heart. Thank you all, you know, and Dr. Pranab Kumar Paul. Uh, Professor Golok Nando, and uh, we have a uh, Mr. Sreel um, Chandra Jain and uh, Mr. D Dr. Ramapati Panda. We are scheduling the dates, and Mr. N. Rajagopalan, uh, we met today, and you will be also joining us in the, in the future schedules. Okay, that's all, and I invite all of you to join these events on a regular basis. Every uh, two weeks, one time, and one month, two times, we are having this event, most probably on the Saturday. If there is something conflict, the date will be on the Sunday, but it's basically on the weekend time, so that we all young people learn from the you know the journey of the you know experienced, well respected, you know eminent persons. Okay, so and uh, before I end this program, um, special request to all of you. Uh, you know, it's important. I think COVID gave us a big lesson. What is important in our life? Uh, my way of conveying requesting all of you is uh, please plant more trees. 
in the surroundings of your home and your workplace so that we have all have a, a you know better environment and more oxygen i think you, we all know how that we suffered a lot with this because of lack of proper oxygen mm -hmm. but i think pollution you can clean it up by planting more trees with that note i thank you all uh, once again um, in for joining this event uh, i'm hoping that um, all of you benefited out of this uh, session with uh, mr v, v Srinivasan, sir. and uh, with that note sorry thank you very much thank you very much thank you. Thank you.